Hello, gathered friends. I'm Roar Nuva, and welcome back to Bionicle Deep Dive, where we analyze the tropes, characters, and lore of LEGO Bionicle. Now, this video will be taking a meta analysis on the use of distinct character roles in Bionicle by looking at the relationship between Maku and Holly, and in particular how Maku started off as the main Gamatorn character, but her role was later eclipsed by Holly, who not only became the more notable Gamatorn by the time of the first movie, but also went on to become a Toa. Let's take a look at the relationship between Maku and Holly in terms of their prominence in the plot and how Bionicle's unique visual storytelling was used to foreshadow and communicate their relative roles in the story. So Bionicle is a series with loads and loads of characters, owing largely to the fact that since LEGO released sets in groups of six, most of the character archetypes were multiplied by six. To make things easier to keep track of, from the start, Bionicle relied heavily on fitting characters into discrete, easily identifiable roles, and the unique ways in which they either fit into or subverted the expectations for those roles is where a lot of the character moments and dynamics came from. At the start of 2001, we essentially had three significant characters from each element and village, each of which fit a role or archetype. We had the village's Toa, who was the main hero. We had the Turaga, who was the wise elder and mentor. And we had one or two prominent villagers who we would see and interact with apart from the masses. For Gakoro, this was Gali as the Toa, Nokama as the Turaga, and Maku as the main villager. Or, at least at first. But when we look at Maku very closely, her design and her role in the stories she appears in, it almost seems as if she was intentionally written to be a placeholder, a bit of a red herring, while they were waiting to unveil the true Gamatorn main character, which would turn out to be Hali. Back in 2001, during Bonacle's first arc, LEGO teamed with my McDonald's to release six Matoran sets that came in Happy Meals. These six were meant to be the most prominent villager characters, and each was the right hand of their Turaga, and filled leadership roles in the villages. Each of them wore a recolored version of their Toa's mask, somewhat symbolically showing a connection between the Toa and their villagers. Except for Maku. She was the only Mictoran to not wear her Toa's mask, wearing a Huna instead of Gali's Kau Kau. It was a very conspicuous breaking from the pattern, and visually sets Maku apart from the others. But it's never brought up, and we never see any other Gamatoran characters wearing Gali's mask, so for the most part, we just brush it off as an oddity. But then there's another little quirk in Maku's role that comes in Minog, Matanui the online game. Over the course of the game, the player, as Takua, gets to know a bunch of Miktoran characters from all over the island, more than just the Miktoran that we saw. In particular, we meet the various left hands of the Turaga, who sort of fill the role of the secondary Miktoran characters, who didn't get full sets, and were generally a bit more quirky than the Miktoran. At the end of the game, you're tasked to form the Chronicler's Company, and all the Matoran you are told to recruit are the left hands, except for Maku, who was the only right-hand Miktoran who chosen to come along. So here we see that Maku stands out as unusual among the primary Matoran from each village, and she's also included among the Matoran who are considered the secondary characters from each village. While she still definitely fills the role of the main Gamatorn, she's written and designed in a way that breaks the pattern established by the other Matorn. And then, boom! We're introduced to Holly, and the questions of role are even further complicated. Holly first appears in the 2002 Borok animation, and it's funny because the first time we see her, it's only three seconds in an establishing shot, but immediately we lock onto her and want to know more about her, and it all comes down to visual design. She's the first Gamatorn shown wearing Gali's mask. We're instantly prepared to see her as a prominent character because she fits the pattern established by Matorn from other villages, the pattern that Maku broke. For fans who have been keeping up with the series, it was like how in a lot of anime they'd give the main character a crazy wild hair design and surround them with a bunch of normal people and be like, oh, can you spot the protagonist? And for those episodes of the Borok animations that Holly appears, she's clearly shown among the other main characters, but she doesn't really say much. So we have this character who very clearly has main protagonist hair, but is just sitting in the background. 
And meanwhile, we're still focusing on Maku, who has the lines and the screen time and the character moments. But just at the end, when we're about to say, oh, maybe she's just some background character they decided to give a cow cow, since there just wasn't anyone with that mask before. She has a little quiet moment with Jaller, where she puts a flower in his mask, and we're like, oh, this is a cute little subplot. Cements in our mind that this is definitely a character look to look out for in the future. And the next time we see her is when she stars as the player protagonist in Minog 2, The Final Chronicle. Having her star in the sequel to Minog, and having her explore the island, helping people from each village, and learning about their cultures, draws a direct parallel between her and Takua the Chronicler, who was THE most prominent Matoran character in the series at that point. Throughout the game, we learn that Holly is a somewhat shy and unassuming girl who, despite her bright ideas, rarely speaks up. That is, until to the surprise of everyone, she is picked to be on the Gakoro Koli team alongside Maku. Interestingly, it is explicitly stated that she is being chosen over Kotu for the spot on the team. Kotu was Taraga no Kama's left hand, and the one who probably should have been filling the role of secondary Gamatorn up till this point. So we already see that the theme of Holly stepping into the spotlight and taking on roles assumed to go to other characters is very much on the writers' minds. Over the course of the game, which was released across several months in the summer of 2003, we as an audience got more familiar and attached to Holly. We've been primed to pay attention to her, and her role in the game made us even more invested. Much like how B Takua, being the main character of Minog, primed us to love him then. It all leads up to the movie, Mask of Light, where she gets most of her development. We see that she's grown a lot past her fear of speaking her mind and uses the lesson she learned to bring the whole island together and become the new chronicler. Meanwhile, Maku is a background character for the movie, showing that by this time their roles have reversed. And going forward, Holly stays in the spotlight, obviously eventually becoming the Toa and, becoming a, and really becoming a main, main character. Holly's whole character arc in story is centered around gaining confidence and rising to a new role. So it fits that from an out of story perspective, her arc is centered around going from a minor background character to slowly rising in prominence to becoming a major character. It's honestly as if from the start, Maku was created and written to set us up for Holly and her character arc. It kind of sucks for Maku, as she was definitely an interesting character in her own right and the first ever Bionicle I ever got, so I am biased. It is really interesting how Bionicle used and subverted the tropes that it created to explore one character while subtly priming the audience for another. But that's my take on how Bionicle's visual storytelling was used to both create and subvert the roles for its side characters. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care, my gathered friends.